Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. Let us continue with my Japanese movie collection. So, first one tonight is one that I covered in my Asian horror playlist, of course. That is the Tales of Terror from Tokyo, the movie. So this is, I think, uh, pretty different in terms of runtime for a horror anthology. You know, most of these Tales of Terror from Tokyo films are like those five-minute shorts. This one, I think they're a little bit longer, if I remember correctly. Like maybe 15 minutes each. But uh, I enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was a pretty cool little, uh, little anthology film. It had some interesting, interesting little uh, stories in it. I think this one might have come out in 2003 or 2004, so check out my video for that year. Again, if you're into the, uh, you know, the Japanese horror anthology type uh, format, this is a good one to check out. It was fun. <clears throat> Next, we have another film that I'm going to cover soon in my Asian horror playlist. And that is Talk to the Dead. Now, uh... This one is about a young prostitute who attempts to talk to her recently deceased little brother. So, you know, it seems like a pretty generic premise, but the uh, this had pretty good overall quality to it. You know, it's one of those surprising films that uh, kind of caught me, caught me off guard. This one was released in 2013, actually, pretty recent, and I will cover it once we get to that year in my Asian horror playlist. There's a few... You know, surprising little Japanese horror films during the 2010s that seem generic, but are uh, but are quite good. This is one of them. So uh, I will cover that when we get to it. Another one I already covered from 2008 is Tamami, The Baby's Curse. Yes. This is the one about the little girl who I think... Uh, uh, is found by her biological father, and she moves into this new mansion, or her uh, her new home, which is a mansion, and there's a killer mutant baby that lives in the attic, and uh, there are some problems that are, that arise. This is a fun movie, definitely a little bit different, definitely a little bit different. I liked it. Check out my review from 2008 for my thoughts on this one. It's pretty sweet. All right, our next film here is also very different. All right, this one's a pretty bizarre movie, and that is The Taste of Tea. So now this one, let me see if I have my write-up here. Let's see here, let me look it up. All right, so this is an odd, quirky tale of a family where each member attempts to conquer a certain obstacle in their life. So I remember this one uh, <clears throat> was uh, was a pretty good flick. They had some actually really funny moments to it. It's kind of a, it's a comedy with some drama in it, and uh, a very weird one. And uh, there's some weird visuals in it, some really funny jokes, but it's got like a long runtime. I think the runtime's like almost two and a half hours, and I thought it was too long of a runtime, which kind of hurt it a little bit in terms of pacing. But if you want a if you want like a really weird drama comedy type thing, this is a decent one to check out. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend a blind buy, but uh, if you could rent it, it's uh, it's interesting. It's pretty good. <clears throat> now one that's also pretty weird. I'm getting into some pretty weird movies today. Looking at this lineup. Yeah, we got we got some weird ones. This one is one that uh, nobody ever talks about, and I'm kind of surprised. You know, Taste of Tea I can understand because it's really not that great, but uh, Ten Nights of Dreams is pretty cool, man. This is a pretty cool flick. This is an anthology, I think, of ten short films. Um, this says here it represents the combined efforts of eleven directors. 
This outstanding anthology delves into the surreal subconscious with ten madly imaginative, reality-subverting visions that range from wonderfully wacky to nightmarishly unsettling. Yes, this has a wide variety of stuff in it. It doesn't, like, stick within one genre. You get some horror, horror in there, you get some drama, some comedy, even a little bit of action mixed in, thriller type stuff. This is this this anthology is definitely one of the wilder anthologies that I've seen. Very very creative. Like every one, I'm trying to think of every one. I don't know. A lot of the shorts are pretty crazy, and they're uh, you know it helps to mix things up. One of them is actually an anime short, which is quite stunning to look at. And I also got the uh, the Japanese box set of this Ten Nights of Dreams. It doesn't really come with any booklets, but it has two DVDs in it. Of course, they're not English subtitled, but this is one of those instances where, you know, I bought I bought the DVDs, the Japanese versions, before I even knew it was going to come out in America. You know, because there's no guarantee it will ever come out in America. So this is a pretty, pretty sweet little, uh, little box set. You got two DVDs here. Yeah, I definitely recommend you check this out if you want like a like a crazy anthology to to, uh, to digest if you're feeling a little adventurous. Definitely has a wide variety of stuff. So I I might actually do a separate review of this one, Ten Nights of Dreams, just because it's so kind of underappreciated and really interesting. So look out for that. I'll do that eventually. All right, our next one here is one that I've covered from the 1980s, another completely crazy, weird movie. Tetsuo, the Iron Man. Look at him. He's got his head of iron hair. <laughs> yeah, it's about a salary man who transforms into a, you know, he starts growing like metallic and devices and stuff and wires out of his body. It's pretty nightmarish stuff, man. You know, it's only 60 plus minutes long, and that's a good thing, because this movie is just assaults your senses. It's it's so much fun to watch. A lot of people don't like it, though, which is kind of understandable because of how completely freaking crazy it is and assaulting on the senses, but I thought the direction in this was phenomenal. The budget on this was like peanuts, and uh, Sukumoto did a fantastic job directing this. The sound, the, the soundtrack is pretty... Pretty awesome, too. Check out my Asian horror review from, like, the late 80s in the, to get my thoughts on that. No, that, that's that's a true film for the adventurous. It could be the craziest film I've ever seen, believe it or not. It could be. It's one of the best. All right, we got another Ozu film here. This is There Was a Father. All right. <clears throat> now, this one... Let me check out my notes here. So Ozu directs this film that focuses on the relationship between a father and his only son when they sacrifice their time together for the son's schooling. So I have in my notes here that it, uh, you know, this, this one does have a few pacing issues, I thought, but it has a strong opening and a strong ending, and that's what makes it kind of... Uh, worthy of a viewing so again i don't think it's one of ozu's best but it's it's watchable and that's that's the case with a lot of his films very rarely we come across a a bad ozu film <clears throat> all right next film here is another crazy movie you got ozu mixed in with all this crazy stuff tokyo fist sukamoto again the man just dominates my collection i I have no choice, man. I, I want to buy every movie he came out with that uh, that I liked. This one, really crazy. Let me uh, check my notes for the most succinct. So we got, after losing his job. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm screwing up here. Come on looking at the wrong file. That's what happens when you don't script videos, people. 
Sukumono directs this exposition of philosophical masochism. So a desensitized businessman and his wife develop self-awareness and liberation through their pain and suffering via boxing and self-mutilation, respectively. So yeah, it's basically like achieving liberation, like uh, psychological liberation through pain and suffering. And that's one of the, the really interesting themes that Tsukamoto has in, in many of his films is that, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people, you know, especially like Tokyo Life, it, you know, it, it's almost zombie-like. You know, it's uh, people like to be, and I'm actually kind of like this, like people like to be, you know, sanitary. They don't like to get grimy. They like to be clean. And Tokyo Fist is one of those ones where this salary man is confronted with some pretty how can I say this, like, uh, grimy stuff, you know, he, he gets, he gets beat up, you know, and it, it really, Tsukamoto does that juxtaposition where he compares, like, sanitary conditions and, like, the grimy conditions and how, you know, being subjected to stuff like pain and suffering and stuff like that makes you feel alive, and it's like the, the essence of, of vitality, which is really interesting, and, uh, this is really good. Very weird again. Again, you got some weird stuff in here. There's some graphic violence, but uh, I'm definitely going to do, a again, a separate review on this, this one. This is a great movie. I love it. Now, has there been any special features yet? I keep forgetting. Uh, I don't think Talk to the Dead had any. Let me just backtrack here. Nope. I don't think Taste of Tea did. None of those. Did. What about Tetsuo? What did... It doesn't look like anything here. There was a father didn't have any. Man, what a terrible... What about What about Tokyo Fist? Okay, we got... No. No. Nothing there either. Alright, so let's continue. Next one here, again, another completely crazy one. Tokyo Gore Police. Check out my Asian horror reviews from 2008 for my thoughts on this. Again, completely crazy. Again, one of the crazier movies that you'll see. Totally gory, but it's gory in a in, a, in kind of a uh, over-the-top, slightly pretty cheesy way at times. Although it does get pretty nasty at times, too. You got that blend. So, yeah, check out my review from 2008. This movie's... I love it. I love it. Not for everyone, though. All right. And then we got Tokyo Sonata. This is Kyoshi Kurosawa. I remember when this film was announced back in 2008, I got a little irritated because I wanted him to continue making horror films. You know what I mean? Because his horror films, Kyoshi's horror films, totally different from anyone else around. And I like that. You know, I want as many of those films as possible. But uh, he moved back to drama with this, and he hasn't really returned completely to horror yet. So I'm hoping he kind of does it's eventually. But this is really good. You know, it's about a dysfunctional family. The father loses his job. And I've read stories about this in Japan where a salaryman loses his job, and he just walks around in parks all day, making basically making his family think he's at work. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he'll come home at the end of the day. So they sometimes they'll keep up this impression until obviously the paychecks start coming or stop coming through, and uh, you know the family finds out, you know what I mean. So that's kind of like the premise, and the dysfunction in the family is uh, is pretty very well uh, portrayed. So if you like really good family dramas involving dysfunctionality, Tokyo Sonata is up your alley. It's it's a very good movie. Again, an Ozu film again. Tokyo Twilight follows the parallel paths of two sisters contending with an absent mother <clears throat> and other things that I won't reveal. This is a little bit darker than some of Ozu's other films. I think this one, this is one of those standouts that's kind of off the beaten path. It's a little bit different uh, from his typical family dramas. I remember like the way it was shot even. Pretty, pretty dimly lit you know, it's cloudy out a lot of the time, so he definitely goes for a darker aesthetic, and the story also uh, is kind of mirrors that. 
So this is a good one if you want something a little bit different from Ozu. Tokyo Twilight, and it's very good stuff. Very good stuff. Satsuko Hara is in it. So, yeah. Definitely worth checking out. Alright, next is the Tomie Collection. Yes. This is the Tomie Collection. There's one, two, three, four, five movies in here. Tomie, Tomie Another Face, Tomie Replay, Tomie Rebirth, and Tomie Forbidden Fruit. Uh, some of those are good, some of those not so much. Check out my Asian Horror playlist beginning in 1999, and uh, I cover these fairly consistently. It's a pretty cool set, though. You got, you got all the films. So, uh, <clears throat> there's a, I think it flips over here. That's the fifth film, or the first one, I should say. Special features on this, making of featurettes. Trailers for all five of these Tomie films, a still gallery of Junji Ito's illustrations, interviews with the cast and director, storyboard to film comparisons, special effects, and, uh, and other stuff. So this is a nice box set. Uh, you know, back in the day, ten years ago, if somebody would have said I would have had uh, most of the Tomie films in my collection, I would have said they were nuts. Because when I first watched a lot of these, I just thought they were like, okay, you know what I mean, or maybe just not good. And then when I rewatched them, you know, a handful of years ago, I liked them a lot more. I mean, I don't think any of them are particularly great, but, uh, yeah, I do like them now. So I, I'm glad I was able to get this for a reasonable price and uh, have them in my collection in case I feel like them. Because they are a little different. Then I got the, uh, the two later movies, Tomie Revenge and Tomie Beginning. One of them's good, one of them not so much. And check my Asian horror playlist for details on that. I think these were these had cheaper budgets to them than the previous films, but eh, Tommy is a little bit different. The girl who cannot die, pretty cool premise. Still think they could have done a little bit more with uh, more with it in the script writing department. All right, our next film here is a is a is a good one from Takashi Shimitsu, and that is Tormented, also known as Rabbit Horror. Um, this one was like a return to form <clears throat> after the uh, the crappy Shock Labyrinth film that we covered. This one was in 2011. Uh, it's about a mute woman played by Hikari Mitsushima, who is great, and her little brother who experienced nightmarish visions involving a large rabbit. So yeah, I'm going to cover this when we get to, uh, what was it again, 2011? Yes, in my Asian horror playlist, which is the next year that we will be we'll be carving into. So this one was one of the better ones, I think. Got some pretty cool visuals to it. Again, Hikari, I always like seeing her in movies. Shimitsu rebounding, so this is a good one. And uh, check out my playlist. I will I will cover it. Don't worry. <clears throat> next, we have some uh, films related to the Trick television series. We have Trick the Movie, I believe this one is. And, uh, you know, they, they came out with three seasons of the television series, and then between and after those seasons, they came out with, like, three or four theatrical films, and then, like, three or four Shinkanku or uh, Shinzaku specials. So I have, like, a few of the movies sporadically uh, I actually think the television seasons are better than the movies. Remember, this one is about the, uh, 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 I guess, the uh, klutzy magician played by Yukie Nakama. And uh, the hilarious professor, science professor, played by Hiroshi Abe. So yeah, I definitely recommend Trick. We'll get to the, the television series when I cover my TV series collection. And uh, I'm going to do a separate review of that at some point. Here's a few of the Shinzaku specials, the made-for-television specials. Everything trick-related is worth watching, even though I think the TV series uh, are the best. Trick. Pretty fun stuff. Alright, I think I have enough time to knock out one or two more here. Here's a weird one. Pretty, pretty uh, charming. Turtles are surprisingly fast swimmers. The premise for this one, very weird. 
not not necessarily a weird movie per se. It's about a an ordinary bored housewife who sees a wanted ad for spies and decides to join. So the theme of the movie is about looking at everyday tasks with a different perspective. So the protagonist must knowingly act ordinary to avoid drawing attention to herself, even though she has not really been asked to spy on anyone. So again, kind of a weird, odd premise. But uh, the humor in this, since it's a comedy, is really quite quite good. You know, definitely a bit on the quirky side. And uh, like I said, it's very charming, though. You have Jury Ueno, who's very good in this. And uh, Yu Aoi, who's also very good in this. In a smaller role. So if you want a, a, a light-hearted comedy that's a bit different, check out Turtles Are Surprisingly Fast Swimmers. This is the UK DVD release. Cool flick. Let's knock off one more real quick. Yeah, this one I bought while I was in Japan. This is the uh, Uniform Survey Girl. Short for Survival Girl. Uh, the first one I think was good. The other one, not so much. Uh, check out my Asian Horror Playlist. I don't know when these came out. Maybe 2009? Real low-grade, like, zombie-like films. But the first one I thought was pretty good. DVD, I mean, how could you not buy this? When you're seeing this on a shelf, you gotta buy this. <laughs> you know, I had no choice. It was a pretty good purchase. I was kind of happy with it. So that's it for tonight. Maybe able to crank through in uh, one more video, box number three, and then we got the slip cases, which will be one more video. So... As always, I will see you next time.